Good morning, everyone. Episode number three, Dr. Bo Show. Really long title, De-Evolution, or Human De-Evolution and the Death of the Blue Collar Worker. So let me explain. This is going to be an episode that's a little more like story time. Um, maybe you wouldn't tell this story to your kids before they go to bed because it may sound a little depressing. But even though we're talking about the de-evolution of human, uh, hopefully I can put a positive spin on it and show us how I think we can change a lot of these things. So uh, I saw an interesting article, I think it was in USA Today, I think it was about two weeks ago, uh, and I think the title was something like The Death of the Blue Collar Aristocracy. So uh, I can remember, so let me start this, this big story with a mini story. I can remember stories, I was too young to remember, of my dad who, um, as I was growing up, was a coal miner, um, has always operated heavy machinery, so was part of different unions. Uh, but when we lived in a small town in Illinois, my dad was making very good money with the coal mine. Uh, he was part of the local country club, which is still a small town, so this isn't like a super nice country club. Morning, Tracy. Uh, but to have a coal miner be a member of a country club, go golfing every once in a while, this is a blue collar worker, a heavy machinery operator, and then you fast forward to today, like it is so different. My dad just retired um, not more than two months ago. Um, he didn't really operate too much anymore. He was more in a managerial position, but um, definitely wasn't the member of a country club. Maybe he could have been, but it's just a different world. And for really centuries, uh, humans, maybe more than, more than centuries, for the entire existence of homo sapiens, we have been quote unquote blue collar workers. We've had to labor for what we, uh, what we needed in life, whether that was food or clothing or shelter, we had to usually provide it or help provide it to others in those means. Uh, we had to, uh, I mean, it was just, there wasn't a lot of time for exercise because our physical labor was that of our work, feeding ourselves, feeding our family. And then as the world became more industrialized, uh, you go into the industrial revolution, things like that, that's where these terms, or these delineations actually, this uh, dividing line between kind of white collar and blue collar, where you saw white collar become the more administrative roles for these blue collar jobs. And then, not that they were necessarily white collar, you always had the political um, bourgeoisie and all this, that uh, maybe that's white collar, but I, I think of white collar more of the your, your desk worker, your administrative roles, accountants, things like that. So these didn't exist until, I mean, they always existed in some form or another, but even in it, think of probably ancient Egypt. Um, I doubt very many uh, accountants, because there were still people that basically uh, kept track of finances, didn't labor in some form, whether that was walking long distances of every day or uh, whatever it was, it was just a far different world. And then as we became obviously more and more industrialized, uh, European culture led to more of these prominent positions, whether that was, you know, a desk worker, a monarch that like we started sitting for a long time. Uh, but then we, we see this, the death of this blue, blue collar aristocracy, as this article said, where in like, around World War II when obviously we had this giant industrial uh, kind of basically explosion where even women started entering the industrial workforce to basically supply munitions and uh, materials and um, vehicles and tanks and everything for the war effort, uh, we saw that the blue collar world, we realized what we needed and the blue collar workers started to form unions, they started to get paid uh, probably what they're worth. They probably don't get paid what they're worth now, especially with this, this is my quick political rant, stupid uh, minimum wage increase. Uh, but they were getting paid very well. But the crazy thing was, at the same time that these people are getting paid well, it turned from our labor in the blue collar world of feeding ourselves and providing for our family, we began, began to have to, as blue collar workers, sacrifice our time and our health to feed ourselves and our family. And what do I mean by that? So again, I'm from a very small town in Illinois, less than 15,000 people, and I call it the, the hard mentality. 
So there are a lot of people in my town that believed or had the mindset, and we talk about mindset a lot, had the mindset that like you were rough and tumble, you uh, caterpillars headquartered in Peoria, which is right down the road from where I'm from, that you may be a uh, you know a pipe fitter, a welder, a farmer, uh, whatever it is, right? Um, but that kind of had its own little, I guess, basically, if you want to call it kind of a, a social class within itself, like a social class within the blue collar worker of a hard life. Like you think of a rough neck on like an oil rig. Uh, and I've seen a lot of these things firsthand, like living in Alaska, my ex-brother-in-law worked on the oil fields in Prudhoe Bay and was up there every two weeks. And it's just a different crowd. And I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. But these are also people that and this is what the big point of what I want to make today. These should be in our society, and maybe this is disappearing due to some other things we're going to talk about. In our society, blue collar jobs, these laborious jobs, these manual labor jobs, these should be the people that are the healthiest in our society right now. Why do I say that? Because they are the people that are doing manual labor. They're doing what, for the most part, humans were meant to do is pick up heavy things, be on our feet, um, usually far more social interaction in a manual labor job. Um, think of a construction site and um, kind of the john that goes on between guys. So like social interaction, manual labor, uh, we usually have to use, even though we don't think of it like this, we tend to use a lot more analytical thinking and common sense in these jobs because we have to apply previous knowledge from people that we worked with with on the job, kind of on the fly thinking to fix problems that need to be fixed, right? Just because somebody's not um, schooled as an engineer, there are a lot of people that have an engineer's mind out on a construction site or a landfill or whatever it is. But uh, as these people started to trade time for health, it, it developed this, this hard mentality where we saw people uh, start to sacrifice time with their families. Um, they, they lost relationships outside of work and this hard mentality is you work nine to five, maybe a lot more than that, because these are the same people that are going for overtime to make more money to feed their families and themselves. And they start turning to drugs and alcohol and opioids. And this isn't my opinion. There was an article, this is, I'll put it in the link here, but basically looking at um, how for the first time in the past decade, the middle, and this is very specific, middle class white Americans are dying faster or sooner, so their, their mortality rate is lower than it has been for the previous five decades. Which is crazy if you think about the advances in medicine and we're having a, a large subset of, this is an American issue again, just American, so that's a whole other topic we can talk about, but a large subset of the American population that should be the healthiest population we have is the most unhealthy and is suffering from opioid and alcohol and drug addictions and extremely high rates of suicide. Now, why is this? And I, I think it's just what I said. They're sacrificing their time for a dollar because we keep devaluing manual labor in our world because we're in the information age, we're in the knowledge age. So these blue collar jobs are disappearing. Information and knowledge is now the, the product that we're looking for and this whole industrial revolution came about because we were basically, we were product like pounds. Like we wanted production. Think of the GDP, the gross domestic product. That's how we rated nations for years. It's how we still do, that's probably gonna change. It may be GKP, um, you know, or I don't know, gross knowledge product, I don't know. But um, we were all about production and producing and mining and drilling and all these things and that's changing a because we're running out of some of these things B because it's production is being outweighed by basically think of like everything in the cloud now like it's information and how do you go about these processes smarter and do we even need to go about these processes as we did and then you get to the whole automation side of will people even be running heavy machinery down the road um, in numerous power plants, there's not even power plant operators anymore. That's, I mean, it's all computer based and it's basically just somebody checking over the computer. So there's more and more jobs going by the wayside. And I know this may seem like so sporadic for like a, a health video, but it, it blows me away that at the same time that we see this blue collar epidemic, right? 
uh, blue collar health, uh, this middle class America is dying, um, both from a health standpoint and overall the jobs are dying, that what's the other epidemic headline? That we're, we're movement depleted, that we're obese, that children um, aren't getting enough exercise. Like, do you see how crazy this is? That the people that are out there doing manual labor are as unhealthy or more unhealthy than the people that are sitting at desks. So you gotta ask, like, where are the healthy people at? What are they doing? Well, it's not job-based, it's mindset-based. So you, I have seen, um, we have numerous patients that amaze me that they are blue collar workers, manual labor workers, and they're still going out and exercising and trying to eat right and coming in here. Um, and obviously you're gonna have your, your white collar jobs and your executive level people that are uh, more interested in health, but a lot of this has to do with the socioeconomic um, background and class, which people lie in that gives them access to uh, proper knowledge, proper education, and basically proper health care. And we're not going to get into the big health care health, healthcare debate, but what we got to think about is if there is a true decline, which there is, in blue-collar jobs, right? So there's going to be less manual labor. There's going to be more information-based jobs. There's going to be more automation and more AI. So there's going to be less jobs for manual labor, even if that manual labor still needs to be done. Like, what are we to do? And I know that you guys have seen and, like, in my world, we, we talk about movement as medicine and um, we need to move more. Like, that's fine. But what's crazy is another article that came out in USA Today talked about how millennials are seeking blue collar jobs for two reasons. It was prior, probably about five years ago, we saw more, and this is what I call uh, hipsters breaking their own mold. Like hipsters aren't hip anymore because they're going back to what has already been done. Hipsters are supposed to do something before it's been done, so you're not hip anymore. But we see hipsters, or this millennial age, going into these blue collar jobs because they couldn't get employed anywhere. So they were having to go into manual labor jobs, construction, road crew, whatever it is. But then you're also seeing a large group of 20 and 30 year olds that are going into blue collar manual labor jobs because they don't have a sense of purpose in what they're doing. So as humans, we have purpose as one of our, like in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, purpose is in there. And if we lack purpose, like beyond food, shelter, and basically like love, like we need purpose, otherwise we're just floating in space and we will uh, pick the wrong foods and pick the wrong people to be in relationships with and all these things that will lead to the demise of our health. So it's funny that you see this millennial group and it's probably beyond millennial now, going more to these what we call blue collar jobs because they lack purpose. So it, like getting back to moving, like manual labor, becoming more human, doing what we've done for probably millennia is giving people purpose, even though I doubt that many of these people find purpose in, I know it's cool to be a hipster and wear your leather apron, or apron and be a blacksmith and use your old school uh, wood mallet to create your woodworking pieces. Like that's fine, but like we have to ask ourselves the question of like, are we, we're just continually filling gaps, right? We see these younger people going back to blue collar jobs. Well, you're too late, too little. Like you're the to total opposite of hipster, right? Like these jobs are disappearing as more and more people are looking for purpose. So the, the question should be like, what is the answer to this? And I don't know if I have the answer to this, right? But it's, it's kind of scary when you think about it. And I, again, at the beginning of this video, I said, I don't want to create this depressive attitude of uh, humans are de-evolving, right? We're, we're becoming more unhealthy, even though we're, uh, we may have a laborious job that the labor that we do, we get uh, recompensed for it less. And then the fact that we get paid less means we can't do what we want to be able to do and we're not happy and we don't have access to healthcare. So we turn to drugs and alcohol and I'm not saying any of this is excuses to go do those things, but we live in a, a fairly like screwed up world right now where uh, like our mindset literally has to change. Like I listened to an, an extremely cool podcast, uh, The Model Health Show with uh, Sean, I think it's Sean Stevenson. I, I don't know if that's his last name, but he had Dr. Bruce Lipton. Dr. Bruce Lipton is an MD, uh, pathologist, uh, cellular biologist, 
basically talking about one of his quotes that can sum it all up is our thoughts are our chemistry. So this isn't like the power of now and the secret, even though it may sound like it. But when we talk about like epigenetics, and epigenetics basically means above genetics and what rules genetics is your brain. So where I want to take this talk to wrap it up is a lot of people get wrapped up in, and I mean, I, we talked about this before on a video, like my genetics. I don't care if it's a bunion people think it's genetics or if it's their obesity people think it's genetics. Go listen to this podcast, read a book from a guy that's an MD that's taught at Harvard, that's lectured at Stanford, that's done all these things. Our genetics are responsible for probably 1% of total health issues, whether that's illness, predisposition to body morphology, whatever it is. Uh, what does make up the other 99% would be epigenetics, which is going to be predominantly influenced by our brain, which our brain is predominantly influenced by our environment and thoughts. So our perception of our environment around us and then the, the kind of internal talk, which is our mind, is what rules epigenetics. Like that's kind of crazy when you think about it. But this is a perfect example of how we could have nowadays a blue collar worker that's getting paid $15 an hour, but has a proper mindset and can live an extremely happy, healthy life. And we could have an executive making $300,000 a year that sits at a desk that is completely unhappy because their environment sucks or their perception of their environment sucks. So I'm not telling you, you can think your way to happiness, even though maybe you can. I mean, listen to this podcast but you can definitely start to perceive your environment different and then realize what is in your environment is everything from literally your environment. So there's three levels to environment, right? So we've got the world, we've basically got our own health, and then within that we kind of have like the microcosm of the stuff that we may not understand that well, like literally like quantum mechanics uh, or quantum physics maybe uh, more appropriate. But if we realize that like the food I put in my body, the exercise, the movement I do, the relationships that I have, the books that I read, these things are influencing my perception, which is directly influencing my health. And the more we find out about this epigenetics, which will be the next step in like the medical field, which is what I'm trying to get here to is like, where do we need to go if we're de-evolving as humans? This is the big thing, but the big thing is it's going to be more on you. Like the doctor of the future will be far more of an educator, which is what defines the term doctor is teacher. That's what doctors will be more of because what we're realizing is the medications that we give, the surgeries that are administered, um, the therapy that is done has very little to do with the person doing it or the procedure done or the pill given. It's more about how you perceive what's going on. I mean, I'll put a research article in about the sham surgery with arthroscopic knee surgery, where the sham surgery, so they basically cut a person's knee open. Um, they were on, under local anesthesia, so they're still with it, both the, the actual surgery and the sham. Showed a video on the sham where they actually cut the people and stitched them up afterwards, but a video of an arthroscopy going on, and then the people had the actual surgery the same exact outcomes, right? So like this guy upstairs is ruling things and it's ruling things in a way that we didn't think it was before. So um, it, it's not this like, we're, we're ruling energy necessarily, like we're affecting genetic expression through thoughts, which maybe isn't a new idea to you, but you better believe that it's, it's becoming far more accepted than it ever was before. Let me look through some comments here. So Jared said, do you have any idea how hard it is to convince my 16 year old who's very analytical but hates school that a blue collar job is perfect for him? All I hear is military college. Um, those seem to, I can't read the rest of that comment for some reason, but I'm gonna kind of try to touch. Jared has a very good point. So um, I'm friends with Jared. Jared owns a gym here in uh, Chelsea. Uh, his son, he's saying that like he thinks, Jared thinks, um, which we could have a conversation about that too that his son, like a blue collar job would be maybe a better fit for his son, just personality and the way that he thinks and the way his mind operates. And like, A, you may be right, Jared, but like, you know this as much as I do and I'm not obviously telling you it, but like, if he doesn't figure that out, it's just one more like, I'm doing this because like, I think I'm good at it or my guidance counselor told me, like, I've learned more times than once, I've had to go out and fail. Like I did, I did the business thing. I traveled all over the US. I lived in all these different places and I had to realize 
still am realizing every day what I do and do not like doing. And the more you realize like what you're good at and really cash in on that, more from a, I don't even know if it's a personality standpoint. Um, I'll bring up Bruce Lipton again. He's, I don't know what, uh, what religion it was, but he said they had it right. He get, and their kind of saying was, give me a boy up until the age of seven and I'll show, I'll be able to tell you what kind of man he's going to be. And basically he was saying in those first seven years of life, we are, we are patterned. We're basically putting, putting our own little matrix where, um, for the rest of our lives, those first seven years are what determine how we, we basically interact with the world. So maybe that's where your son, you know, got a lot of this analytic thinking and uh, a lot of this like tactual, like, um, you know, acuity where he's better with his hands and he would be better at manual labor and not, not better at manual labor. Like, Oh, you go work construction. Like it's derogatory. No, like you will get more from a contentment standpoint out of working with your hands, which will probably get you further in life than thinking that, um, that the path of education and academia or a white collar job or a desk job is going to get you further. Cause that, that's the mindset that needs to change that there is a route to success. There's no route to success. The only route to success is your route. And that can be anything, and success is also defined by you. And I'm not trying to go all Tony Robbins on you and uh, motivate woo-woo, but like, like my definition of success changes almost daily. Um, sometimes I feel like I go backwards, um, but when I find myself going backwards and determining what success is, I would find myself more often than not comparing myself to others, which we live in a world where we're just full of comparison. Um, so I don't, I don't know. We're kind of going way off topic, but... Tracy said, we've evolved quickly in the areas of technology entry because our values are based on perceived needs. This has cost our belief systems, our emotional. I wish I could pull up these whole comments. And great stuff, getting down to root cause. But, so to kind of tie this up, we talked about a lot of stuff and I know I'm gonna to try to do like a, a multiple part series on this, the de or human de-evolution because um, I tell all my patients in here like, when you get down to brass tacks from a what we are supposed to do as organisms, not just humans, animals, we're supposed to be efficient. So when we talk about efficiency, it's about energy efficiency. So if I was still out living on my own and I had to hunt, I would not want to be energy inefficient. So I would run out of calories and die. Like that's when you get down to bare bones, like what evolution is probably predicated on. That's a lot of what it is. So if I sit and I look at a computer and I play on my phone, I'm gonna get far more efficient at that. If I use my body on a daily basis, I challenge my body, um, I treat it right, I put the right nutrition in it, I'm going to get more efficient at becoming healthy. I don't know if many people think about health like that, like becoming more efficient at being healthy, because you're just becoming more efficient at being unhealthy. That's all, like, believe it or not, like, cancer is the appropriate action for the perception of your environment. Like, it's not like, a lightning bolt struck from the heavens and gave you cancer. No, you are, your body's doing what it needs to do to try to keep you alive for as long as possible. And if it didn't, you'd already be dead. Um, that's what like a tumor is. It's basically the formation of all the things that would be slowly systemically killing you and you're walling them off the best you can until you can't anymore. Um, but what I want to try to say is like become more efficient at what would be better for you um, rather than like the, the other, I mean, it's, it, I know that sounds like too easy and it's like, well, I know that this food's bad for me. I know that this relationship's toxic. I know I need to exercise. As I said before, knowing is like 1% of the equation doing is the 99% and we need to do what we know is good for us, but we also just need to do. So blue collar jobs ain't sticking around. There's probably going to be crazy little robots running around doing a lot of stuff that we thought we're doing or are doing right now. So if we know as humans, we need to move, we need proper nutrition, all these things like you have to put that in your life somehow. It doesn't, if that's exercise, if that's getting out and, you know, planting a garden and growing your own food, if it's, you know, hiking up a mountain, I don't know what it is, but like these jobs are going away. Um, our world is changing. Health is declining. So like you have to do something about it. And the last thing I'm gonna to touch on talking about this environment factor is, um, I see a lot of things on Facebook and I obviously, if you guys have seen, I have this little like side social media thing called the Athlete Conservancy, like trying to get like athletes together to realize like we need to 
be aware of what we're doing to the environment and what we can do for it for the better, right? Like helping the environment, doing what's right for that. But realize when we say that we're trying to save the world, that's completely wrong. When, we try, when we're saying we need to help the environment, we need to uh, help the healthy ocean, but we're not doing that. Like, again, I always reference him because the dude speaks some truth. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tossin, NDT, my bro. Uh, we are not trying to save the world, we're trying to save ourselves. The world is going to go on far long after humans die off if we die off. Right? The earth is going to be around. It's going to go through a cycle. It's going to come back around once it wipes us off if we try to intrude it too much. What we got to realize is, remember I said there's these macro levels of the environment. So we got the earth, we got our health, our kind of body, and then we got the, the kind of micro, the things that we don't have a huge understanding of, like quantum physics level stuff. Uh, we're doing to the world what we do to our bodies every day. So, like, if you don't think we have a mindset problem rather than a healthcare crisis, like, check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's all I'm going to say. So, I'm going to keep talking about this. I hope you guys have questions about this. Bring up some stuff. Like, debate this stuff. Let's talk about it because a lot of people don't, aren't comfortable talking about this. And I can guarantee you, like, if I went to my hometown and brought up a lot of these ideas, and maybe I'm wrong. I haven't been there in a long time. Like say I went into the local, the local bar, I go into White Oaks, and I start talking about like, man, our mindset needs to change because like, it's not the best thing for the world for me to go work at um, Caterpillar all day, get off work, go to the bar, have 12 beers, go home, eat chicken wings. And you may say, well, it's my choice to do with my body. What you Absolutely. But your choices have a ripple effect on everybody else. And your health, just like the healthcare crisis is costing everybody money to take care of the sick. Like our individual choices are affecting our health, which affects everybody's environment. And it's like this giant ripple effect everywhere. And that's all I'm going to say about that, guys. Let me read Gene's comment. So my friend Gene is up in Alaska. So one of the places I said that I've I lived for a while, I miss Alaska quite a bit. Um, I, I think, like, think of all the shows. This is the last thing I'll talk about, I swear. Um, think about all the shows that have sprung up about Alaska in the past five years. I remember when I, Gene can attest to this, when I moved back is when the Gold Miner show started. And I believe it's the Schnabels, wasn't it, Gene? Um, were on that show, and I was like, holy cow, like, you know, I met that guy, whatever. But I think why everybody is so fascinated with Alaska, the last frontier, is we realize that it, we're, we're finally realizing, even though it's always been called that, that it is the last frontier. Like we're seeing a glimpse of something that A, is changing very rapidly, B, that whether we want to admit it or not, are like, holy, holy hell, like we're, we're screwing up here. Like I want to see what these people do. I want to see the mountain men, what they're doing. I want to see these crazy gold miners that kind of live off the land and live the rough life for sure but are living a far different life and also see like firsthand the impact on the environment and their health. And uh, I, I just, it's funny the more you think about this stuff, like whatever, maybe Alaska just became the hot topic just out of a whim. But I really think it's because the, like our deep seated like consciousness about like the environment, which is the, the macro level of our own personal environment. We feel like we're being, we feel like we're killing it, which would be killing us. So we're like, oh man, like Alaska still got it. Like, what could we do to be more like that? All right, because that's a lot of what reality TV is, is taking a peek in other people's lives to see if like we're a lot like them or a lot different and how can we change to be one or the other. All right, bunch of nonsense. What am I talking about, guys? I hope you guys enjoyed this at all. I love being on here. Um, I love talking to you guys. I love the feedback. Um, if you guys have questions about this, you can always reach out. Uh, next topic will be on another one about human de-evolution, um, we're going to take a little different spin. We're going to go the athletic route. We're going to talk about, I brought this up a couple videos ago and I want to make sure I hit on it, is why in America, a lot of these are American problems, why are American distance runners are getting slower? And then we'll try to basically put that up against um, the, the bigger healthcare, um, health issue, um, human de-evolution problem. As always, you guys know how I end it. Question everything, find your truth. Thanks for joining me, guys.